Got You Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products, using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. How's your Sunday night going, folks? Welcome to Got Your Back. Sunday night edition. Live streaming on Twitter and on YouTube. And the whole crew is here. Rob Brown, Jason Strudwick, are waiting to break down the road trip, the game today. And talk about all of the other things going on around the hockey world. Steve Taylor, manning the controls in Kelowna. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Coming to you from our Long Shots studio. It's more than just golf. It's a sports destination. Long Shots on Stony Plain Road and right here in Sherwood Park. As always, the podcast got your back. Brought to you by our proud title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. Number one GMC dealership, all of Canada, six years running. Buy a newer used vehicle and mention that got your back sent you. They'll not only receive specialized pricing, as a bonus, you'll also get three free ultimate detail packages on a newer used vehicle. Visit Phil and the fantastic crew in Sherwood Park or online at www.gmcpod.com. As we welcome in Jason Strudwick and Rob Brown, guys. Let's do a Sherwood Buick GMC mood check at the start because, you know, Phil likes to make sure everybody's doing okay all the time. He's a guy that cares about people. Mm-hmm. So let's do a little little Sherwood Buick GMC mood, mood check here, Struddy. We got a bit of a note from you today that had us concerned about your availability <laughs> for tonight. I don't know if you want to explain uh, how you're feeling and uh, and how the mood is right yeah. now, buds. Yeah, well, first off, I've never missed a pod due to illness, injury, uh, or anything. It's just uh, <laughs> someone gave me the wrong time. But I am a little tired. <laughs> I attended a concert last night, uh, and I extended my evening pretty deep. Uh, and the problem was that there was a, we, we sprung forward the time and then I had to get up at six to mm. uh, get my kids off to their various oh. activities. So mm. I'm working off about four hours, uh, okay. sleep here guys. So no I'm, time change trap. I'm dragging, but, uh, you know, professional, obviously I'll, I'll be the most entertaining of the four of us tonight and, uh, <laughs> wish you guys luck. Well, you know, there are some out there that think that maybe you should have taken a few of those other ones off. <laughs> fake injury, fake illness, whatever it is. But we're happy to have you tonight, Struds. I mean, sometimes you got to play guilty. Today you're playing guilty. Oh, Love it. Yeah, very guilty. Brownie, where are you playing from? Where are you? Know, uh, I'm, I'm in Jasper. Going on? I'm in Jasper right now. I, I drove up here after the Oiler game. I, I stopped and had a went to Jasper Pizza for a pizza and a beer, and then I had a hot tub <laughs> and maybe a beer and. Now I'm sitting in my room having a beer doing a podcast. It is a very good day, Shoggy. That is a good day. That's a quality day, man. That's like there's I love you it. know, I, I love a pizza after a day on the hill. I do have to say. Yeah. I love dinner out and a pizza. There's something about, you know, just devouring an entire pizza after a full day of skiing. I actually I haven't skied yet. That was oh. just that was just after a drive. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's awesome. Really good. Hey, uh, by the way, Struds, I was at my mom's place today for coffee. And she was super proud of herself. Uh, she's taught herself to knit socks. What? And so, yeah, yeah. She's actually knitting, like, like really nice socks, and like wool socks. And so, anyways, so it was a really nice conversation that I had um, with my 71-year-old mother about, uh, right. about the, the knitting that she loves to do. <laughs> and I found it really interesting that I could I could sit and share with her that, one of my good friends and co-workers also loves to knit in, in, in Jason Strudwick. And, and she thought that was super cool and said, good for you and doesn't want us making well, fun of you. Oh, no, I, there's no, I, it doesn't bother me at all. But maybe we can get together. Uh, maybe she's got a club out there I could come and join yeah. and uh, show what I – my scarf's come along nice. It's probably halfway done. Uh, after this, I plan on a few rows myself, not to toot my own horn, guys. Oh, I, I actually thought, Shaggy, you are going to say that your mom, after watching Strudy's World, decided she'd have <laughs> – tomato soup and learned it <laughs> you can have it as a paste as well Dude. actually I, I told my i told my wife holly about that strutty and she said that when they were kids they would use they would use the the tomato soup and without water like you but they would put it on toast and make grilled cheese 
tomato oh. sandwiches oh. that way. She said, That's there's a suggestion for you. Since wow. you don't know how to make soup, you may as well try making a sandwich. Wow. The, the directions aren't clear, guys. Let's be honest. <laughs> Strutty, the amount of the amount of people that have commented to me about that Strutty's world, that Strutty's world has gotten as much action as as pretty much anything else we've done on the podcast, Brownie. You guys too. So much reaction. Wait for tonight's. I think tonight's <laughs> might even be better. Come on. Yeah. Obviously, unrelated to hockey. So I've been yeah. fired up about this one, Look guys. Look at you oh, laying the groundwork. Jack. Okay, well, let's yeah. hurry up and get through this hockey talk so we can get to Strutty's <laughs> world. Uh, let's break down the game today. Brought to you by Mr. Dirk, the iconic men's clothing store in Edmonton. They're founded in 1939. 1939. They've been around for that long. That's because they know how to serve you. And it's great quality uh, clothing. I almost said food. Great quality clothing, um, suits, shirts, pants, dress shoes. Then they got great casual stuff as well. It's a fantastic environment over there. Sterling and Dan, they set a great tone. It's like up tempo, classy, great place to be. It's got a great vibe to it. You got to go check it out. Just off White Avenue and 102nd Street. Uh, MrDirk.com is the website. So a 4 nothing shutout victory. And I think we need to start the conversation with Calvin Pickard today because just keeps putting up solid performance after solid performance. Uh, Brownie, I'm not starting with Strud's on the goaltending, so I'm coming to you, my friend. <laughs> Pretty meaningful when your backup can go in and, and give you the kind of quality that he's giving when the Oilers are trying to steady themselves after the last few games. Yeah, uh, it was another quality start, and it, it wasn't a quiet start. Yeah, there were a number of grade-A scoring chances given up. Uh, I, I, when at the beginning of the season, I mean, there was no thought of Calvin Pickard being part of this, this team going forward. And here he's a guy now with what's that 10 and four in the season now, nine and four in the season. He's quality mm -hmm. start after quality start. I think right now it gives the management and the coaching staff and the team a lot of confidence going into playoffs that, I mean, heaven forbid something ever did happen to Skinner. They've got a second guy they can put in. Although I don't know if you guys saw it. They, the camera zoomed in a couple of times on Skinner late in the game, mm -hmm. and he was a little sour. He was looking at Pickard. He said, you better not ruin my shutout bid tonight, guy. You better <laughs> not. I got a team <laughs> shutout going here. And Skinner yeah. a couple of times gave him a glare from the bench. I'm not saying that there is an issue there, but he wanted that shutout. Brownie, look at you. <laughs> look at you. Oh, boy. We'll wait for the article, article to come up on that one. <laughs> I was kidding. I know. Yeah, I love what Pickard's done, and I love that they're trusting him to play more games. Now, obviously, uh, Latang yeah. and he must be related in some way because Latang said, We got to get this guy a one goal here just to feel good about himself. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, you know what? I, I and I, I've been talking about this a lot. They have to keep fre as fresh as possible Skinner. And every time Skinner has another good start, it's like, hey, we can play him more. We can play him more. And I'm not suggesting a 50-50 split or anything like that. But, you know, this last week, he's played a number of games and he's played well. So I'd like to see him continue to get a start. Um, he's doing what he's asked, is giving his team a chance to win. Hey, you know, Strutty, on your point, I know that you've talked a lot about getting rest for Skinner before the playoffs. Great example right now is in Vancouver. The amount of games that yeah. Badger Demko has played, and they talked about it. I can't remember it was 33 or 40 or something like that, uh, and he's injured right now. And fatigue uh, helps create injury. And right now the Vancouver Canucks have their, their – their, they're holding their breath as he is the, the MVP of that team. They can't afford to have him out. So another reason why you want to get your, your star goalie, your starting goalie, some rest. Here's Calvin Pickard post game. Just, you know, happy go lucky guy. Good guy. Players seem to love him in the room and just, you know, pretty chill. Um, I'll be ready when called upon. And, yeah. Um, yeah, this this last seven days, eight days, I played three times. So it's good. Uh, it's a good opportunity for me. Um, just want to, yeah, help help any way I can. And I think our schedule lightens up a bit here in the next couple of weeks. So that's good. We need to get some rest. It's been a crazy stretch the last little while, but uh, it's good to uh, go home with two points. And here's the head coach on what he got out of his uh, starting goalie today. He's played extremely well, making some huge saves, and he really earned that shutout. And unfortunately, it's not his shutout um, just because he got pulled for the uh, spotter for you know two minutes. But um, you know, in our minds, it's definitely his shutout. And of course, that comes to you courtesy the Weiss Johnson Sound Box, Edmonton's first choice for all your heating, air conditioning, and plumbing needs. Sunny days are back, and if your mind is on summer, be ready to take advantage of Weiss Johnson's sale, 25% off all in-stock air conditioners, 
Check out weiss-johnson.com for details. Jingle. Whoa. Dave, that was fast. I even threw you a curveball, buds. He's on the ball. Uh, Struds, what's it like to go 24 goal games without scoring a goal when you're expected to score goals? And uh, what did you think of Darnell Nurse in that third period? Yeah, it's funny. You know, it's, it's nice to see. I think that, you know, what I loved is that three D-men scored today. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, I joked about the first goal, but, you know, for Connor to get that gift from the tang. Then after that, three guys that were not, you know, you're not expecting those guys to score. You know, you don't, you don't, it's nice for them to score, but I can tell you it's one thing to get support from your bottom six, but when your D-men score, it helps a ton. And tonight they got three. Um, you know, Darnell, you know, he, he prides himself, I think, on being a really, really good defenseman. He also wants to score and contribute offensively. So I don't think that's his primary job, but a night like tonight where maybe the forwards were having a tough time creating that offense, Brownie, having three goals from 2D, I think that is absolutely humongous. Oh, it is. It, it certainly is. Especially this is a team that surprisingly at times has had trouble finding the back of the net. To me, I think it's bigger, though, for Darnell Nurse. Uh, he and his partner were split up because they weren't playing well since the All-Star break. A lot of talk on social media, a lot of talk in the media. Darnell, um, all players know when things aren't going as well as they should. So Darnell knows he hasn't played as well as he has or can. A uh, game like this is a confidence boost. He was, I mean, seriously, how how much were you pulling from to get that hat trick late in the game shorthanded? Mm. That would have been huge for him. But no, I think this is a, a confidence boost for Darnell because it, the Oilers, if they want a long playoff run, which they expect to have. They need a very good Darnell nurse. An average Darnell nurse, this team's not going anywhere. And mm -hmm. I think this hopefully will be a bounce for him for the remainder of the season to get back playing the way he's capable of playing. Pretty impressive stats line, 1949, two goals, and they were biggins. Seven shots on net, uh, 11 attempts, and three block shots. That is a monster of a game from Darnell Nurse on a night where the team needed it. They needed this win to finish off this road trip and feel good about themselves flying home on that plane. Struddy, the difference in getting this win and coming home with that many points in the bank on a on this road trip, that's a big one. And, and I know it, you know, they've just coming off a winning streak and they, you know, they had the opportunity to, you know, you drop a few here and there, it's not the end of the world. But it had kind of nudged in the wrong direction since the trade deadline, hadn't it? They needed to correct it. But let's just look at the game. So you have a huge win against Boston, and that's mm -hmm. that's the fun, you know. Then the trade deadline's there, and then you have a, a a couple where that that, you know, we can you can say well they got to be professional machines, but it does change it a little bit, right? Because you're no one left the team, but there are changes now in jobs. People, or I should say, no one has traded from the team. Some people left the team, but there there is a bit of uneasiness. It changes things a little bit, and not that anyone's unhappy, but it does change the way the team looks. So. Um, today was a, a little bit better a game, but let's let's call it what it is. Six games in nine days. They're they're all over the place. They're back and forth. You throw a couple big wins in there or, or emotional wins and the trade deadline. I think that the best thing that could happen was getting those two points today. It was an early game, so they're probably going to be landing in Edmonton, I'm guessing, sometime between 9 and 10 p.m. They'll mm -hmm. have a nice sleep in their own beds, have a day off tomorrow, practice on Tuesday, and then have the Capitals come in. Uh, to, to play on Wednesday. So it really, really sets up well. The rest, um, getting past this kind of tough chunk of games and a lot of travel, uh, I, I, getting these two points is humongous. And you fly home and just rest easy, boys. No, you're right. And the, to sit on the win. It, it, yeah. if, if they were to have lost tonight, then to have to sit until Wednesday, having dropped three straight. Uh, and, and the way they did win, I mean, it was it was still sloppy at times, but still it was a goose egg. It was zero against. And I think that's big too. So now they get to sit on a two one and one road trip, which looks a lot better than what it could have been. Mm -hmm. And then they start thinking about a Washington, and then the game. I think that all of us are excited about come Saturday against Colorado Avalanche. Oh, that's going to be a gooder. Here's Connor McDavid on the trip overall. We played a lot of hockey lately. There's that's no no excuse, obviously. But uh, six games in nine days with travel, coast to coast. Um, it's been a grind here. So um, we'll take the two points here. We'll take five of. Five Late on the road trip, and we'll take a little rest at home and, and, and get ready to go next week. Let's talk about Connor McDavid for a moment. Uh, I thought it was a really good side that Connor McDavid stepped over the blue line and just flat out sniped on a tender one on one, mano a mano, and he just sniped. <laughs> now, Brownie, was it just me, 
Or does that have the opportunity to maybe just have something go click a little bit in a guy? Because did you notice a few shifts later, tried the slap shot in the <laughs> high slot. I just can't help but wonder if scoring a goal like that doesn't just kind of awaken something in a guy that's been dishing a lot. Um, I, I think he also he had a feeling it could be a big night. You mm -hmm. know, you score a goal early in a game, and this is a team that you've feasted on. You're thinking right now, this is going to be a big one. So when he, I was, I was shocked when he tried taking a slap shot. We don't see that. Very I know often. he I was, was like, laughing well, on the bench after too. <laughs> hey, you knew they were giving it to him for that. So I, yeah, I, it was a good night. Let's be honest. The last two games that the Oilers played before this, McDavid was not McDavid. Uh, there was turnovers. There were uh, plays that he would want back twice, turned the puck over, creating eight grade, a scoring chances. One was a goal that tied the game. I, uh, Rarely do we see say that Connor needs a bounce back game, but he did. And he came out, he scored a goal, a confident goal. Uh, he was all over the place. And I do believe the fact that he's playing Sidney Crosby, he wants to impress. And seems like every time they play the Penguins, Connor McDavid impresses. You know, I I think that it does help that they they they, they that he was able to score. Um, but it, like, honestly, this, this is the type of game that maybe a few years ago, the Oilers would have lost it to me. It was just pretty even mature, you know, like they weren't great. They didn't have their best stuff. Um, their goalie helped them out for sure, but they just found a way to win, you know, and McDavid, maybe he sensed when he got that puck, man, I got a chance, get that first goal. Maybe one goal would be enough today. And, and it was, mm -hmm. and then you get the, the kick in from the two D men. But I, I don't know. I just, I just love that. They, they just found a way to get to two points. You're not going to pull a lot of clips out of this saying this is a perfect game. But sometimes just getting the two points, getting home healthy, getting some rest, and regrouping for Wednesday, I think that's enough, guys. Uh, Got to give some love to Evan Bouchard. How about that sequence, Struds, where he breaks up the play, coming at him, and then makes like a 150-foot pass, tape to tape, uh, going in the other direction. Like, this guy's ability to fire that puck up ice and hit people on the tape in stride Man, when his when his puck just distribution game is is rolling, he is brilliant at it. And I thought that was a fabulous sequence because it involved a great defensive play combined with a beautiful pass. Well, he's the best passing defenseman on the team, and yep. he, I, I I think we 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 talk so much, or everyone talks about his boosh bombs, and and I get it. Like those are the things that put on Instagram, but his passing is so good. Um, and and when he's, I think when he's moving his feet and kind of getting to position early. The game is a lot easier for him, but it is it is true for everybody. So that sequence was great, um, but I love seeing him when he when he's really activating, getting in the right place early, and then making those passes. Man, it's fun to watch. And he gains confidence. He you can tell when he is confident. He, he just plays differently. He starts making the plays. He jumps up in the play. He leads the rush, uh, and he's better defensively when he's making confident plays offensively. So uh, he was good tonight. Again, uh, the Oilers. Uh, it wasn't a mistake-free game, but the the plays they made, the offensive plays they made, uh, were enough to to overcome a, a Penguin team that is literally playing out the string. It's it's hard to watch. I mm -hmm. mean, we've now seen them twice yeah. in how long? Two weeks. Um, what? How would I watch them play the other day? I watched them play, and they it is just they have. There's not a lot of fight in that team right now. And I no. honestly, I think what it is, guys, I don't know where the hope is. You know, mm -hmm. it's it. Do they have a lot of prospects coming? A lot of draft picks. Like, their 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 stars are are aging. So I just don't know if you're in that dressing room. You're like, where do we go from here? And then you got Kyle Dubas, who I I think I cannot stress how bad a decision it was to trade for Eric Carlson. And it's not him, the player. It's this what he does, the cap hit, the assets, mm -hmm. the whole thing is just. It is, you know, how can you have faith in that guy to turn it around? And I, I was asked this week if I thought Sydney would finish his his um, time with Pittsburgh as an NHL, and I'm I was a hundred percent earlier this week. After seeing this and kind of thinking about it, it feels harder to believe that he may finish his time there because I, I don't you see said one hundred percent. You you answered immediately. You were like a hundred percent, and that was after the they got absolutely crushed in Calgary and Edmonton yes. in back to back days. Yeah. But you know, Struts, right. the, the problem, and you said it, is a lack of hope. I went through the cap friendly today to check out their, their oh. cap hits. They've That's got, fantastic. so what are the Oilers? Hyman and, and Nugent Hopkins, about $5 million each. Yeah. yeah. They've got Rust and Ricard Raquel okay. at $5 million each for the yeah. same amount of years. they got four or five years left, both those guys. they got oh. no, tr no trade move, moves for all of those guys. Uh, they got, what's his name, Erickson, for five more years or six more years at yeah. $10 million? 
this team is in trouble and it's in trouble for a long long time it's, chris it's, are yeah. yeah go ahead Streds. It's, it's a disaster man and i i hate to say that about three guys i respect so much and what mm. they've meant to the nhl and their team chris r poignant with his comments says here's the breakdown and by the way he sent this right as i was starting the breakdown here's the breakdown pittsburgh stinks edmonton did enough to win distilling yeah. it right down to that and yeah. on the tail end of a road trip I think the Oilers will probably take, take that. They'll take that one, jump on the 100%. plane, and come on home. Let's get to the UCAN Youth Services Relentless Player of the Game, an Edmonton chari charity that is relentless in helping youth age 16 to 24 get out of harm's way and find employment back in our community. Visit UCAN.ca to see how your donation can change lives right here in our community. We are a monthly donor here on Got Your Back. And uh, we encourage you to check it out. Maybe you might want to be as well. Struddy, who are you giving the nod to, buds? Not easy. I had two guys, but I'm going to go with a goalie. I mean, Pickard gets the shutout. Um, he, he was solid tonight, uh, played really well, took the hit, went out, which is I, – I still don't understand why they have to pull him out. It, it's To me, that's not a – that's not a direct headshot. It's a it's – a, you know, a hit, but I, anyways, um, I think he he played a great game and he was, I thought, relentless throughout the game. So pick the big pick gets it. All right. Good stuff, Steve. I'm not sure if everybody froze or just me. Are we okay here on the stream or my, We're good. everything for me is frozen solid. Okay. Probably just an issue on my end of it. Uh, all right. That was our, you can use services, relentless player of the game. And a reminder that Rob Brown's appearances and that fine looking hat are brought to you by kin print. Helping you find creative ways to promote your brand, high-quality apparel, top-of-the-line brands. Visit kinprint.ca, and we'll give away one of those hats coming up a little bit later on in the show. All right, when we come back, I uh, want to talk a little bit about the new guys, how they're looking, and also talk a little bit about Captain Connor McDavid and some things that I saw uh, when I was on the road with the team watching practice coming off one of their worst games of the season. That and lots more. Strutty's World, Ask Us Anything, Take a Lap. Tons more show ahead. Stay with us. The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0. Stay smooth, gentlemen. I'm super thrown off. Can't see anything. Can't see you guys. Can't see myself. Just talking to a phone now. So, Steve, let me know if there's any issues. Technical difficulties. I will. Everyone looks good. You All look right. great, buddy. Things. I just like I don't like not being able to make eye contact when I talk to to Struds. Brownie, not so much, but I but. I need the eye contact with Struds. <laughs> that enough for takeaways. That's brought creepy. to you by it is creepy. <laughs> brought to you by Redefined Health. Focused on restoring proper health and function, not simply reducing symptoms. Redefined Health is a multidisciplinary clinic dedicated to helping you get healthy, stay healthy, and perform better. Go see Doctor Tyler Fix. He's awesome. Redefined Health. Dot com. Um, let's do a check-in on the new guys, Struddy and Brownie. I'm not sure why. Um, not sure why Sam Carrick wasn't in the lineup today. I don't know if he was dinged. I don't know exactly where that came from. If they just decided to healthy scratch him, I don't like it. I don't like the decision. Um, but I, I'm not going to criticize too much because I, uh, I, I'm i not sure exactly what the reasoning was. And I didn't hear what Chris Knobloch said. And because it was an early game, there was no pregame availability. But... Um, didn't love that decision, but I'll throw it over to you, Brownie. What uh, what have you thought of the two guys so far? Well, first, uh, uh, we did hear from Knobloch earlier, and he said it with travel three games and four nights that he just felt like they needed uh, – maybe he needed a rest. I, I disagree with it too. The guy in his first game fought uh, for his teammate, fought a, a huge tough guy, one of the toughest in the league. And then game two, they brought him in to be a fourth-line guy to provide energy and win face-offs. He went 8-0. and oh winning every single face-off uh, against the Sabres. But Strudge, you know as well as I do that when something goes wrong with the team, you got to make changes. And it's always a fourth-line guy that comes out and you're sending a message to the team. You're mm -hmm. going down on the, to the minors or you're sitting in the stands. We'll teach the team. 
So I thought it was, I don't understand that. I thought Carrick in his first two games gave you what you expected. He fought, he provided energy, he won face-offs. He's been fine. Uh, Henrique, to me, looks smooth. Uh, I, I, he, he's smart. He makes the right decisions. And it's funny coming from a team like Anaheim that is bad as it is, I find Henrique always makes the right decision, whether it's uh, being on the defensive side of a player, getting just the puck off the glass and out, chipping into the right area. That's not usually something you see from a team that's always losing. So uh, you haven't seen a whole lot of offense from him. But outside of Connor's line, you haven't seen a whole lot of offense from a lot of players lately. So I think both players have come as advertised. Yeah, I, I was a little bit surprised by the uh, scratching Carrick as well. I, I, you know, you get a new player. I think you kind of want to get him up and running, make him feel oh. like, like he's part of the group. So I think this was a a, a surprise misstep for me for for for, for Chris Knobloch. Um And he is, you know, exactly what he says he is. He's he's a physical guy that wins face offs, plays hard. Like I, you know, I think you got to let the guy kind of work his way into a lineup, into a team. Um, on the flip side, uh, Adam Henrique, I, the more I, I've, 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 I've advocated for a long time, and I've, I, I think he's very much like Nugent Hopkins. And your description, Brownie, is really fair. Um, he, he, he's just a smart hockey player. He's not the fastest guy, not the hardest shot, not the most physical, but he, generally speaking, does the right thing. And I, I like that they kind of they had him and uh, I think it was he and Perry and. Um, Kane yesterday then say it was Connor Brown with with him maybe try to get a little more speed on that on his wing um but I, I you can see what they're trying to create they're trying to get a third line that can you know create some offense be responsible defensively and one that you can really trust at any time so um now I hope they give a little bit more time for that that type of exercise to, to work out with that line any concern level struds with the foot speed now that we're seeing it and and I'll maybe talk specifically about Henry who is going to be on the ice against some pretty good lines it's the one area where you knew you know if there were a knock against him it would be not the fleetest of foot but seeing it for a few games what do you think i i have some level of concern that when the game speeds up the way it's going to and the Colorado Avalanche roll into town or the third round of the playoffs, whatever. I, I, I'm curious. I wonder. I'm not willing to say it's a, a huge problem at this point, but it's definitely in the something I'm keeping a close eye on category with him. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's a fair point. Um, but I think that's why they, 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 they'll look to get a little bit more speed on his wings. And I think yeah. that's why we saw Connor Brown there today. Um, but again, you know, to echo Brownie's comments, he's generally in the right place most often. Um, so when you're in the right place, you don't have to skate as hard to get back in position yeah. right? or, or to chase somebody down because you're already there. Um, but I, I, I really want to see them continue to work with him and, and, and give him opportunity, you know, in different situations, not just the five on five, the penalty kill, try to get him. Like, I think they had some four and four time today or was mm -hmm. it yesterday. The games kind of blend in a little bit, but I, I want to see that those opportunities for him to really show what he can do. Um, because he, he is so much like Nugent Hopkins. It's it's actually kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Brownie, what do you think? Um, I, I, I agree with what Shreds was, was saying there. Is he, Adam Henrique didn't all of a sudden become slow. Adam Henrique probably has never been speedy. And if a guy, it's like, it's a guy that's small. Like when he gets to the next level, he, he knows how to play being small because he's always been small. He doesn't put himself in a position to get hit right. or hurt. A guy that is not fleet of foot, and I would know because I couldn't skate at all, you just put yourself in different positions so you don't have to chase. You try to be in the right side. You try to be responsible. Uh, what, what he is fast at is thinking. And that's where mm -hmm. if a guy is a little slower at foot, you got to be a little faster with your thinking. And I think that's what he is. He sees the game. He reads the game. So if you read the game quicker than the guy you're playing against, well, you're going to get a head start going to wherever you're going so you don't have to be as fast. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And uh, and and how about Carrick? I mean, he, he wants to be physical, and he seems to be able to get around well enough to at least get there and finish his checks and such struts. But, not, you know, skating isn't his strength. And part of the reason why I, I even bring it up is because I think you can only make so many transactions that fundamentally – either slow you down or don't speed you up, right? So you bring in Corey Perry into your bottom six, you've slowed yourself down. Yes, Sage veteran, and he knows how to function and all of that. But I think you only want to make so many moves where you're going that way speed-wise. And you could argue that that's three moves. There are three main additions here up front are all moves somewhat in that direction. 
That, no, that's that's fair. Now, I guess you know when you get to the playoffs, <clears throat> is it more of a track meet, or are you trying to ground and pound? And I think the Oilers on their bottom six are really going to look for opportunities to play in the offensive zone and wear teams down. I I, I don't really see any other way through to to, to make that happen. And I, that's that's what I would want if I was Chris Knobloch. Uh, you know, not that they're going to run guys through the wall, but get it out of your zone as quick as you can through the, the, the neutral zone as fast as you can, and mm -hmm. then play in the offensive zone and wear teams down, grind teams D-man down. If you're going to play Vegas, you know, and I'm not sure where that would happen, but those six big D, you need to wear them down, tire them down, make them make plays, put pressure on them, and play in their end. And and that is what I'm advocating for those those three guys, or that, those, those, I guess, whoever six players will be, Brown. Well, I agree. And Carrick, uh, he, he's not leading the rush. He's a guy that gets the puck to center, dump it in his corner so he can hit someone. And that you don't have to be the fastest guy in the world to, to go in and lay a body check because the others have had over the years a lot of fast guys that didn't hit. So then they were just, it was just figure skating out there. So they got a guy that comes in and understands what his role is. I think that's the, they knew what they were getting with these players. They got a player that's got, a, it's a very smart hockey IQ player. And they got a guy that plays uh, with a little bit of dirt. He's, he's a little bit of raspiness. So they know what they got. I mean, Carrick is he's, he's still more fleet of foot than than a Sam Gagne. He's probably more fleet of foot and more physical than Derek Ryan. So they do have – they knew what they were getting with him. And, yeah, I've, I've got no problem with what – I mean, he's going to play seven minutes a night. I think they'll, they'll he's fast enough to play seven minutes a night for the Edmonton yeah. Oilers. All right. Uh, something else I wanted to bring up, and I don't know if this means anything or not, or I don't know. I just would be interested to know what you guys think of this. So the Oilers lay just a horrendous stinker the day of the deadline there. Their, um, their game against the Columbus Blue Jackets the day after the deadline, I guess it was. It was really bad. So we go to practice in Buffalo the next day. And I have to say, and I watch a ton of Oiler practices. It was a short practice. It was kind of boom, boom, boom. Um, and Chris Knobloch ran a bunch of drills, got the flow going, lots of puck touches, that sort of thing. But he, he didn't run that long a practice. It was maybe a 20 minute practice and then blew it down. And that was it. And guys, the work started. I was incredibly impressed with what went on for the next like 30 minutes on their own. So many players just started breaking off into little groups and just doing things. You had Leon Dreisaitl and Ryan McLeod. They had a stick laying on the ice between them. And probably 30, 40, 50 times, Dreisaitl will handle the puck, go to his backhand, backhand, sauce it over. And, uh, and McLeod would fire it back. And it's just little things, right? Dreisaitl working on that backhand pass. Connor McDavid stayed on the ice for 30 minutes and was the last one off the ice from that practice. And, you know, he was working on all kinds of different things. He just, it's like he refused to come off. Then there was this massive crowd there. And McDavid took probably 10 minutes and talked to kids and signed autographs and ended media. And anyways, that side of it is not my point. I was just really impressed with the work rate that the captain showed the day after one of the worst games of the year for them. And, uh, I it, it really stood out to me just how much extra time. Like, Brownie, 10 minutes is one thing, right? And lots mm -hmm. of players do that. It was half an hour of extra work. Well, and I'm sure Strud's has been on teams too where the star players, I mean, they're off before the practice even ends sometimes. And at the end of practice, it's it's the scrubs, the, the bottom four or five fours and the bottom couple defensemen who are out there pushing nets, doing – Wally's blue line and back and, and then having little scrimmages themselves where all the skill guys, by the time you get off the ice, all the skill guys have showered and gone home. I, I just think this goes right back to what was said at the end of the season last year, the disappointment this team had on the way the year ended. Coming in early for a captain skate. Uh, I know that they probably don't wish they hadn't said it, but cup or bust. This is a group that feels that they can and should win a Stanley Cup. And since the All-Star break, this has not been... Uh, the team that we saw for the month before that. And it starts with their captain. Uh, the the one thing that I've noticed since I've been doing the Oilers games, this is one of the rare teams where their best players are their hardest workers in practice, oh. in the weight room. That's not always like that. There, It's not it, around the league. It's not usually like that. This There's one goal for this group this year, and that's to win a Stanley Cup. And when things aren't going as well as they think they should, 
you have your captain and your leadership group leading by example, staying out extra and working hard. Yeah, I love it after practice. You always get a sense of how guys feel they're playing or what they need to work mm -hmm. on by what they're working on after practice. And I think that's valuable time. I, I, I love practicing with the team, but before and after practice, that was my time to, to try mm -hmm. to help my skill or whatever I felt was needed. And I, I never understood when guys wouldn't come on early or would leave early. You know, we have that time. I, I, you know, there are some times when you play 30 minutes a night, but there are some times in between games, especially on a short practice, where I think the coach is setting you up to go work on those little mm -hmm. details. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't understand why guys wouldn't do that. You know, and again, I was a guy that didn't play a ton of minutes, but, you know, you can spend 10 minutes on face-offs or one-timers or passing or skating, whatever, right? And, and you know, Michael Nylander, I, I, I worked a lot with him when I played with him, and uh, both in Chicago and New York, and he was great. He, he helped me a ton. I just kind of learned how to do those little details. So it's not surprising that his sons do what they do. Yeah, it's interesting. <clears throat> and do you, how much attention do you think the coaches pay to those sorts of things, guys? Like, is it <laughs> is your free time your free time and you can do anything you want? Or do you think there's a certain amount of attention that's paid and notes taken? And like, because I I mean, look at some guys stayed and grinded. Some guys, you know, Evander Kane bolted immediately when it was done. But now I don't know. Maybe he had treatment. Maybe you never know with those things. So we'll be careful with that. But the point is, is the coach keeping score in his head? Do you think, Brownie? 100% he is. They, they know exactly who's doing extra. Most of the time, you don't need to see who's doing extra in practice. They can tell by how they're playing mm -hmm. or how the practice went earlier. Uh, most teams that I've been on, the assistant coaches would stay out and be an assistant to you. What do you want to work on? Do you want to work on passing? Here, I'll work with you. Hey, let's work on your shot a little bit. Let's work in the corner. So the assistant coaches always help. The head coaches leave because sometimes you hear need to hear another voice. You just can't always hear the head coach. And the coaches know that 100%. Every one of those coaches knows who's doing what at what time. And the one great thing for Knobloch and Woodcroft and uh, McClellan and Tippett and all the coaches that have been here before, they knew that their leadership group was always leading by example. So it was always a safe bet for them. But Strutty, every team I've ever been on, the coaches knew who was putting yeah. in the extra work and who wasn't. It is, right? You look over the whole of the season, right? It's unfair to take one snapshot. Nope. You know, I, yeah. I, I like, for instance, I remember maybe I'd gone to a fight the night before my hands are sore. Sure. That was the day I felt like dangling through pylons. You know what I mean? I'd just be like, hey, man, I need a day off. So, but if over the whole season you never go on early or come off or, or stay on late, then I think there's a conversation worth having. Now, I don't know. Maybe you're doing something at home. Maybe you have a shooting gallery at home or maybe you're going somewhere else. So that's a whole other conversation. But Again, it's it's the, over the whole season. I think you have to look at it. All right, good stuff, guys. Good conversation. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, when we come back, uh, we got to ask you anything. We got to take a lap, but really, I mean, really, what you've all been waiting for. And Struddy has called his own shot today. The best <laughs> Struddy's world in the history of Struddy's world is coming up after this break. Why would you go anywhere? It's gonna be the best ever. It's a high bar. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line track band simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. Time to talk about your mortgage? It doesn't have to be a daunting conversation. With over 16 years in the industry, Maria Gallus with Maximal Mortgages knows how to make it easy. With access to dozens of different lenders, let Maria customize the perfect solution for you. Whether you're purchasing, refinancing or renewing, or a first time buyer, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you feeling confident you're in great hands making informed decisions. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here. Someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. <laughs> <laughs> Hey 
Are you ready? Time now for Strutty's World, brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. I was sipping on some mango last night. Oh, fantastic. If you haven't yet had the experience of this amazing flavored rum, blended on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts, do yourself a favor, grab a bottle. The Brindley family's been crafting shipwreck in small batches for decades. Their spiced rum, aged four years in bourbon barrels, infused with natural vanilla. Get shipwreck fans. Available at your local liquor retailer. And as always, please enjoy responsibly. Struddy, what do you got today? Last night I went to the concert uh, for... Um, it, it, it was pretty awesome, obviously, to see... Uh, it's a good start. Oh, my God. I, I just blanked out. Who's, who, Did whose you concert forget what was concert it? you were at? Oh, my God. Did was it a boy or a girl? Was it country uh, or I was going to say trooper. Oh, He's panicking right now. He can't remember. Oh God, grab your phone. Just, just grab on, your phone on. and take it. It was. This uh, is this is the best Freddy's world ever. Hold on. Bases just, it around a concert. Streetheart. Prism. Journey. Wine. Sorry, I'm back. Journey. I'm back. Sorry, guys. Journey. I can't believe I forgot. No, it's okay, not like you so built this up or anything. Go ahead. Let's start Sorry. again. Continue. Start again. No, there's Last no deal over. To see the concert, a journey. It was it was a fun concert to see, and I'm not like I like concerts. I don't go all the time, but I do believe that when you're you're a, a, a band, there needs to be a certain way you you put together your songs. So you kind of start out with something kind of exciting, and then you, you slow it down a little bit. Maybe some of your newer stuff or stuff people don't know as well, and then towards the end you come out, and then just absolutely your best song. Your iconic song is the last song, and you just blow it out the door. So last night, I settled in. I want to hear Don't Stop Believing. That is the right. song that everyone knows from Journey. Everyone loves it. They have some slow ones. Yeah, I slow dance with my wife. Not a big deal, running my hand through her hair. But when we got <laughs> to the third song, you would have seen my jaw drop when they played Don't Stop Believing as the third song. The third song. I looked at my watch and like, okay, we're done here. It's we're ready to go home. We can tap out. Where do you go from there? You know, in the NHL, would they play uh, the Stanley Cup final in October? Not a chance. There was nobody to stay around. It, would you go into a Metallica concert and hear Enter Sandman, the first song? Not a chance. They're dropping that one, two, or three last. It's it's absolutely crazy. So Journey dropped. It was a great concert, but they dropped the ball at their playlist. And I wasn't the only one. I saw numerous people on my group chat agree with me. <laughs> they were also <laughs> also there. But anyways, guys, I I can't believe a misstep by an iconic band. 50 years they've been in business. And they played Don't Stop Believing third. Man, misstep big time. Iconic. Hmm. Iconic. He couldn't remember the name. I know. I can't. <laughs> that that awesome. iconic <laughs> group. Um starts with a J. I was um, thinking Trooper for some reason. I, anyways, so. Yeah, okay. So I, I think you make a fair point. Uh, I will disagree that Enter Sandman at a Metallica concert, that's not the one I'm waiting for necessarily. I the, the, the one that I would be waiting for in a Metallica concert is Nothing Else Matters. To me, That's uh, that would be a showstopper for me, so I disagree. Uh, what other class, like is there anything even close for journey like is there anything even close oh, that would be it's all slow like open arms or any way you want it that's the way you get it um like but uh, what's open, open arms, arms is second best. how does open arms go struds lying beside you here in the dark like we've all slow danced to that one at uh you know is that the one you were rubbing the fingers through the the fingers well, and the, as soon the as he started singing that his and... wife upstairs started ah, getting all ooh, yeah like, bad babe. memories Bad memories. I only got four hours of sleep last night, oh, but I wasn't alone. Slow dance with my wife, oh, but uh, and, and they have some other good songs. But it's just to me, it was a major mm -hmm. misstep to play that song that early. It just, and it's it such just... a classic intro, right? The piano, right? Oh, down, 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 down. Like that's like well, that's pretty maybe, iconic. Maybe isn't this it? band won't make it then, Struds. I mean, is it that big a misstep? Maybe Journey's just not going to have a career. Well, yeah, they, that's so, true. If they keep misstepping it, like this, so the first people won't remember their name. Journey. Guys, the, the the band before was Toto, and we all know their best song was Africa, and they played that their last song. Everyone was cheering; yeah. the energy was high. Like, what if they'd have played that first? I'm walking up upstairs, go get another round of cocktails. You gotta be, you gotta make me. Wait, stay whoa, 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 whoa! You obviously had someone else's credit card because you don't buy. Oh, my wife's. Yeah, my wife's. Yeah, <laughs> so it's not a big deal. Uh, Obelisk 21 says, I actually like Only the Young Can Say from the Vision Quest soundtrack. Are you familiar with that, Strud? Did they play that? 
I, I, I'm not going to lie. I can, I can run about four or five songs deep on Trooper. That's it. I've, I'm not familiar with that song. At Mick Fosidal says separate ways, wheels in the sky. Yeah. Um, Brownie, is this, are you, is this a, is this, are you a journey guy? I like all those songs. I like journey. I wouldn't have been mad if they played whatever order they played in. And I, if I was doing Brownie's world, I probably would have remembered the name of the band that I was. About to talk about. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, in, in some ways, Struddy, here's the problem. That might've been the best Struddy's world ever. But you get no credit for it being the best Reddy's world ever because the best thing part of it I, was you had not you it was no, not you at all. No, you're right. I I, I made a mistake and I own it. Um, uh, but so did Trooper or not Trooper. Uh <laughs> best. no, what is her song again? That was Journey. the best part ever. He's like Journey. It's, it's like, okay, Strud's best Struddy's world ever. Go. I went to a concert. <laughs> It was a good concert. And, and you can just see no. you were like, oh, no, it it's gone. It's an ideal. Guys, it's... I got very little sleep last and night. And then I, I was I at a concert, good. and it was good, and there was music, <laughs> and that is my story. I'll be uh, next time. Strutty's World brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. Strutty got himself shipwrecked last night. Um, that was amazing, Brownie. Time to let you go, buddy. Enjoy you the rest of your time in Jasper. Today, Shoggy? Yep, yep. You know what we found out today, though, Shoggy? What'd you find out? Our friend Strutty can't play guilty. He can't play guilty. Oh, I'll be fine. Yeah, that's he's willing. Fine. He's willing, but there's not a lot there. Not enough. He's just sleep. not very good at it. Do you want to stick around and do the rest of the show? We'll let him go instead, Brownie. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, pal. Talk to you in a couple of days. The amazing, the talented, the brilliant Rob Brown. Thanks, buddy. Now get yourself off camera. Smart guy. Look at this guy. All right, Strutty. Take a minute to regroup because we got to take a lap next. Uh, Stay with us, folks. Lots more. Still ahead. Winter is upon us, so why not make the best of it? Marmot Basin Ski Resort is where it's at. Ski half price every day, no blackout periods. Pick up your escape card for 99 bucks and make winter fun more affordable. Half the price, all the powder. Get yours at www.skimarmot.com. Time to take a lap. Brought to you by our friends at Backscape. It's the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet, and it just got even better. Backscape 2.0, engineered for back shaving. The new friction fit handle allows you to effortlessly snap the shaver in and out to touch up the rest of the body as well. The new titanium shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Go to backscape.com, use the promo code GYB10 for 10% off your first order of an advanced or deluxe 2.0 kit. That's B-A-K-Scape.com. And once again, that promo code GYB10 really works. It's a good product. I've used it. Give it a go and use that promo code to save a little cash. Shreds, you get your head screwed on straight during that break. You good to go? Yeah, reluctantly. I'm ready to go. Uh, I had to admit I wasn't my best one, but I got a, a chance to, to, <laughs> That's to bounce okay, back buddy. here. We love you. Um, we love you playing hurt, pal. Yeah, so, yeah, no doubt. So, uh, first, uh, Johnny Tortorella has been suspended for two games oh. and fined 50 grand for his reluctance to leave the bench when he was kicked off. Reluctance? Uh, bench. Yeah, he was, reluctance. he was not into it. So, he was defending one of his players, got a penalty. Uh, I believe misconduct action. He was he was arguing with the refs, and the refs had seen enough. This was in the first period of what turned out to be a 7 nothing loss to Tampa. Um, gets the toss, doesn't want to leave. He's arguing with the ref, leaving, leaving. Finally, he does leave on his own. And he gets two, like I said, two game suspension, 50 grand. And I, you know, when I think if I'm on that bench, I'm like, okay, I, like, I, I'm glad that he stuck up for us and defended my teammate, but it's, it, 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 you know, two game suspension for that. I, I'm not sure it's really worth it for him, but that's Johnny Torti. He loves to, uh, he, he does things his way. So here's the thing. He put those refs in such a bad, awkward, terrible position. Like, what are you supposed to do if you're the ref? I mean, he was being petulant, refusing. No, I'm not doing it. Go drop the puck. I'm not doing it. I'm not leaving. Standing there like he he actually believed that he could conjure the power to reverse that call by being so petulant and outraged that he was just going to refuse. Like it was 
it was ridiculous. It was it was silly. And I get I'd rather a coach get mad and yell and scream and pull his tie off and go down the tunnel angry, but to just be petulant and shitty like that, generally speaking, I thought it was ridiculous. And frankly, I the, he put the refs in such a terrible position. I'm fine with the suspension. I am fine with that suspension all day long. I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah, the problem is they had coach and you're suspended for that. Like that's that's a hard one, right? You know, you just well, yeah, really, but worth it. Was but it really refusing? Worth it look, what yeah. what would a player get for a suspension if he stood on the blue line and refused to get into the penalty box for no, that I long? Agree. Can you imagine? It's the same thing. It's like yeah. a player going, "I'm not going in." No, I'm not going in the penalty box. Right. Drop the puck and let's play. And the ref, like, what's the ref supposed to do? Like, yeah. I would have liked to have seen the refs just line up in front of the bench with their arms crossed and just not say right. a word and just stand there, lined up, staring at them. Like, hey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was a terrible yeah. position to put them in. It was arrogant. I totally deserves every second of that suspension. Yeah, and then just a side note: the challenge now for his team. You know, the players are like, when we get those refs again, you know, how is it going to go for us? Do we get any percent the doubts? So it, that's it is a hard it's a hard spot. And again, I I just don't think he he got any value for a two game suspension. Um, moving on, uh, Wild Nashville in action today, and um, the Wild are chasing down, trying to get into a playoff spot. They're quite a few points out. So when they got an overtime against Nashville, they pulled their goalie, Marc-Andre Fleury, comes on the bench, and they put four players out there. Uh, no power play, just it was three on three. Now they're four on three. Mm -hmm. And they ended up scoring. Uh, yeah, Tuchel makes crazy. a nice pass to Matt Boldy. <laughs> and they crazy. get the two points. Instead of yeah. one after the game, John Hines, their, their new or coach, said, we don't we don't need ties or, or one-pointers. We need two-pointers. So they went for it. Now, a little detail, I'll give Steve the credit there. He, I didn't realize, and I think other players on that team didn't realize, if you get scored on in overtime when you've pulled your goalie, you get no points. You don't get one. So even that was up, um, up, up, up or was risky. Uh, I didn't the, know I, that. I yeah. did not know that either. And I don't think mo I, you know, most people, because you rarely see it. You don't we see sure it about often, that? So. <laughs> Is that a bad scoop? We sure about that, Steve? I, I don't know. I was told that from someone else. I think it's true. I, I, I thought. I think I, I thought I read it today. Okay. I, I yeah. I, I thought I read it. Uh, well, now you got me doubting myself, but I thought I read it even before uh, the yeah. big guy. So I'll take a look at it again. But either way, so let's stick with the pulling the goalie for now, and then confirm the second point. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But what what do you think, Struds? Like that is a, and I wonder if there had been any discussion about it ahead of time. Or if all of a sudden it was just like coach is screaming for the goalie and he's like, what? Huh? Or if maybe ahead of overtime, if maybe he would have said something to him, like you go down the bench, you say, hey, be ready. Is that something you plan for? Is it something where you run a four on three power play in practice just be, just in case? Like how out of the blue would that be for the guys who had to execute it? Yeah, I think th there has to be a conversation prior to the overtime. You know, there, there'd be one with the goaltender, then the players are going on the ice saying, hey, this is... This is potentially going to happen um, because you just want your players to be prepared and not be surprised by anything. Because also they look back like, why are there four of us out here? Do we have too many men? And they look back, there's no goalie. Yeah. Um, so I would think that there would be a conversation, maybe even prior to the game or even in a practice day, say, guys, we got to bank points. So if there's an opportunity. We're going to pull this goalie. And I, I think giving the guys information beforehand is better than surprising. It's not like Christmas time. What do you think? What would we be saying right now had they got scored on and came away with no points and they were sitting there, uh, they're at 69 points right now. I mean, they're 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 working hard to try and get themselves in a wild card position, but it's going to be a long uphill battle, right? They're six points back as we speak right now. What would we be saying? Would you be sitting there saying, you know what? It didn't work out, but I love the, I love the aggressiveness. I love the idea. Good for him. Or would it be saying your team is scrapping and clawing for every point and you can't waste enough. Every point is precious. You can't piss away a point when you're in a race like this. Honestly, what would you be saying? I, I would say they got to go for it because I don't think they're going to make the playoffs really? either way. Yeah. So, you know, what? at least this way, maybe you get some momentum off this and build and kind of you know, get some get some juice out of it and then to move towards your next couple games. And it excites the players. You saw the reaction from Mark Andre Fleury. He was on the bench and he was really happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. like I, I and he even said after the game, he said it was I'll be thinking about this one for a while. So All right, I good stuff. It is, it's a big deal. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to wrap it up, buddy. That was taking a lap brought to you by our friends over at Backscape. One more quick break here. We're going to uh, give away a hat when we come back. 
and then get to our Ask Us Anything segment coming up. Stay with us. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvedergcc.com. Yet another reason why we love Struddy. I just asked him during the break. I said, Struddy, is it okay if we do a promo? Promo you calling the best Struddy's world ever and then forgetting the <laughs> name. And he said, yep, that's more than fair. So that right there, that's why you're beauty. Coming to Twitter tomorrow. You'll want to catch that promo. Time now for our Kinprint giveaway brought to you by DeBoer's Golf Shop and Fitting Center. Aiming to help you play better golf with golf fitting instruction, after sales support, some merchandise and clothing celebrating 25 years. Check out their pro shop style atmosphere located at 5311 99th Street. So here's the deal. I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Go to GYBpod.com. Up in the right corner, there's GYB merch, I think it says. And you can enter to win there. If you get it right, your name goes in the draw and we'll get in touch with you. Uh, generally speaking, though, you need to be local because you're going to go into DeBoer's. You're going to pick up the hat at DeBoer's and you're going to get $25 in store credit as well. Sticking with John Tortorella as a theme, where was his first head coaching gig in the National Hockey League? Where was John Tortorella's first head coaching gig in the National Hockey League? Send your answer to us. Go to gybpod.com. And uh, you can grab yourself a got your back hat, potentially. They are for sale as well. You can buy them online on that same site in that same spot as well. Uh, we do have them for sale. So if you don't win the contest and you want one, really cool, though. We've had some regulars on the stream that have won recently, which is awesome to see. Uh, we got some regulars on the live stream that have been uh, picking up the odd hat here, which is awesome. Let's get to our Ask Us Anything segment. Steve, why don't you pop in here? Brought to you by Match Eatery and Public House. Happy hour is better at Match Pub Ice District. 20% off appies, half price wine and other drink specials every day, 2 to 4 p.m. Located right by Rogers Place in the Grand Villa Casino. For more information, visit matchpub.com. Steve, what are the people saying, my friend? Okay, some love for the third line. Uh, Kegel97 oh. says, uh, give Kane, Enrique, and Brown some time to gel, and it will take off. You heard it from me first, and Shane Matheson agrees. He said that third line is so smart. Kane can attack and try stuff with Enrique and Brown to cover. Give them time. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd put uh, Perry and Kane, so if you want to put Brown there to add a little bit more speed, you, you got to give them chances. Like, you got to give them a chance to, to, to gel, feel good about themselves, and do something productive and then create an identity for themselves because we are getting, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end of the season and you have to kind of start fitting your lines together and have it a little bit, at least duos. So if it's Kane and, and Henry, then start, keep those guys together. Let them build something. By the way, you see double A chiming in there, uh, Steve, how about that one? And, that? And, and it wasn't until you came up on the screen, you see double A's comment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking gorgeous, guys, from Double A. Wow. Gor like, gorgeous is the word that Double A is using. So he's, thank you, Double A. You're not wrong, yeah. We're humbled. We're humbled. <laughs> um, we know it's a he, he, she. Either way, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Double A. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Machine Gun Yanmark says, four hits by the Oilers in that game. Dot, dot, dot. Four hits. Let's hope they can flip a switch in the playoffs because Vegas will not. Holy shit, I missed that. I didn't. Did I you did catch that, Struds? I haven't confirmed that. No, uh, it's I, on the event summary. Four hits. It's right here. Yeah, that yeah. can't be right, guys. This both teams have played six and nine games. Uh, so, sorry, six games in nine days. That I've played in those before. You're just hoping to get out of it, and and that I know that isn't necessarily what fans want to hear, but they just want to get through it, get out of it, and get home with two points in their back pocket. So I. I think we've got to give the guys a pass that the game yesterday or today is not the one I want to evaluate them on as far as physicality. Chris R says today's line combos were worth keeping together for a while, giving it a little bit of a prolonged look. There was a great comment. Do you remember the first time 
they put McLeod, Drysidle, and Fogel together. Somebody created a profile. They want so badly to try and name the line. You know how everyone tries to come up with a name for the line right away? So the Buddy comes up with McFosidle. It's his, and it's his actual name on the stream is McFosidle. <laughs> McLeod, Fogel, and Drysidle. So there is nobody more excited than McFosidle that the McFosidle line has been put together. And he chimed, I'm trying to find it. I can't find exactly where he says, but he's like, it's so funny. It says McFosidle. How about the McFosidle line? So, yes, yeah. McFosidle, we'd noticed that. And uh, maybe they'll give it a run for a little while. Got to keep it together for a bit, eh, Struds? Give them a chance, right? And, and But you got to give everybody, every line a chance. I mean, not the first line, but all the other three lines are, are kind of transition. So, you know, you're going to have to find at least a duo in that second line. And is a duo, is it McLeod and Drysaddle or is it Drysaddle and Fogel? Like, start having duos together, then changing the look or feel of the line with the third player in and out. Okay, Marku says, uh, Struts, have you ever left a game that's been, uh, that you thought was over and then you were called back on the ice? Oh, we never talked about that. Yeah. That was bizarre world, That was man. crazy. It was, I, not that I remember, and it's so crazy. Like, that was such a crazy uh, thing that, no, that, that, you know, what I thought, odd, and I, the winners didn't recognize it, right? Like, usually they would, you know, they're pretty on it. Yeah. Um, but they didn't see it either. So I, you know, I don't know if they felt it wasn't going to be called outside. I'm not sure. But yeah, it was that was wild. I've never seen that before. Yeah, they lost that one twice. That was uh, that was an interesting way for that whole thing to go. <laughs> okay, Shane Matheson says Brown was great today. Pressure on the D, they couldn't handle it. Working hard to stay in the lineup. He doesn't give up goals. He will score one day. So a lot of love for Brown on the on the uh, stream today. Yeah, I thought Brown was excellent on this show as well. I thought he really made up for other line mates that maybe uh, <laughs> been a little too much partying on a, time, on a game night. So I, I do agree that Brown held this show together when uh, at least one-third of his line didn't show up. Just a good day for the Browns yeah. in general, hey? Good day for the Browns. Yeah, uh, yeah that's not that, – so the Brown in our podcast was okay. Let's not hand out a, a Heart of Trophy award. But well, uh, he remembers so where he was ice. last night. Well, I remember I was. I just remember it was a very short night. That's the problem. <laughs> um, so the one thing I would say about Brown on the ice, um, I, and I, I advocated a lot for Jack Campbell last year, so you're going to need him. You're going to need him. I think Brown is the same guy. Connor Brown, you're going to need him. And if the better he plays, the better it is for the team. So, you know, rooting against the guy or hoping he doesn't score, I, I don't really understand that as a fan. No, um, yeah. I, I, just, I, I, I hope he gets it so – I hope he gets a goal so badly – and on locks, and he can just go and just keep going. Because I really think it makes a difference. That zero to one would be a huge change for this player. Oh, by the way, Struds, the perspective I thought you would be able to give people, because, and I'm going back now to the, the goal that ended up not counting and the players having to get back on the ice and why it took so long. Can you put into perspective what it's like when you're on the road and you're in one city and you've got a game the next day in a different city when you walk back into that locker room, those bags are sitting there in front of your stall and how fast that gear comes off on a back-to-back. -back. Well, what happens is that you come off and, you know, guys might say, sometimes the coach says something, sometimes he doesn't. But he'll write, or the, the, the team services guy will write on the board. So let's say it's 4 o'clock. He'll write 4.45 bus. So that means that you have 45 minutes to get on the bus. And, and it's rare where people don't make it. So, you know, you like I'd like to stretch. Usually I'd stretch out for a bit, uh, maybe, you know, have a, a Gatorade or whatever and just kind of relax. But there are guys that need treatment. There are guys that have to do media. There are guys that might have family and friends there. So you're hustling to get out of there, right? You're, you might be like, I'm getting out of here because I got to go see a bunch of friends that keep drove down from Toronto. So when you hear the players were, if not completely undressed, nearly undressed, I'm not surprised because there's only so much time right after that game before you had to be on that bus and you do not want to be late, especially after a loss. Dr. Carpy comes in and says, all of us should stop drinking until Connor Brown scores. Who's with me? Um, feel like you might be on a bit of an island there, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Carpy. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I want him to score too, but. I'm not that badly. <laughs> yeah, Steve-O, we, we had one on the goalies there. Make sure you throw that one at Struddy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'll start next game. Ready? What, what do you do next game? Oh, yeah. You got, oh, 
They got a big gap here. Two days, then Washington. Two days, then Colorado. Everybody's going to have lots of rest. Pickard pitches the shutout. He's been yeah. good. Skinner was a uh, couple he'd probably want back last starts. What are you doing, Struds? That's tough. It's tough. I do. I was hoping you actually wouldn't ask me this. Um, yeah, I knew you were. I think you're probably going Skinner, Skinner, Skinner. I'd probably do it. Um, no. And then don't they have a back to back the following weekend? Is it like or, or yeah, sorry, Montreal yeah, 23rd, Tuesday? 24th? Yeah, they got uh, Maple Leafs in Toronto in Ottawa. Yeah. So, but they play the, in Montreal, I think the next, the twos after that. So I'd probably go Skinner, Skinner, Pickard, and then. Uh, Leafs, I put Skinner, and then I put uh, Pickard. You got a Buffalo game in there, too, on the Thursday. Ottawa. Oh, yeah. sorry. So, yeah. So, actually, I might go back-to-back. I, I, I Again, this isn't because Skinner's playing well or not playing well or Pickard. It's just the rest. And I, I'm going to keep beating this drum. So, I might even go – then I might go, you know, Canadians, Buffalo, back-to-back, -back, maybe on Pickard. And then Leafs, and then maybe Pickard again. So, you go 2-2-1-1-1. Two, two, one, one, one. Yeah, I think Skinner's going to play three out of the next four. He'll play the next two and then one of the Washington or Montreal games, and then he'll get the Leafs game on the road, and Pickard will get the uh, the Senators the following day. I think that's the way it's going to go. Steve, let's do one more, bud. Okay, well, then let's do this one. Uh, Jay, when you were uh, uh, singing your rendition of Open Arms, Struddy, he said, mm -hmm. wow, Struddy can sing. And it's funny because I, I I haven't thought of this in years, but I remember when you signed with the Oilers, we uh, we were looking up just, you know, stuff online about you. And uh, I remember Mark Siampa, who was uh, I worked with at the time, was so excited because he's like, oh, this guy's going to be great for all our web content. And there was a video of you singing <laughs> karaoke, and it was a killer song. I think you were with the Rangers at the time. Oh, and uh, You have the video? It was great. I, You know what? I looked for it at one point, and I can't find it anymore. That's the problem with those old NHL videos because they were hosted on like a separate platform. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, got a good... Some we, could good use some more, uh, we could use some more strutty singing content on the pod. I would be yeah. okay with that. Well, I mean, I can bring it. I mean, in a nutshell, there was that was that rock band came out, and we played it. I didn't oh, have right, myself. Right, I'd go right. to my buddies and use it. And then the Rangers heard we did it. So they again, I'm not. I did have a night the night before, so I was pretty hungover. <laughs> and we go to, and they they set up this whole thing, and we, I thought it was gonna be like one guy with the camera. It was like a whole production. And the other two guys, Mark Stahl and Ryan Holbeck, they didn't want to sing. So I had to sing. I'm not the singer. I, everyone knew I was on the on the axe working it. So uh, I had to sing for songs that I couldn't sing. I can't sing. Who could sing the killers? So I looked terrible. No, and I was, I think I had a primarily a mustache. I was sweating. I was just, it was terrible. You it was pulled terrible. It off. Oh, yeah. it's not. It was like, it was fun. Like people really liked it. And they called it the bubble gun game. They tried to make it like it was like a you know, like one of those things you kind of go back and talk about what happened. And it was it was pretty funny. It was it was well done. It's good. Love it's it. Good. Love it, love it. Can't wait for more. We'll get you. We'll do like a, a once monthly strutty singing segment. Maybe we should say one <laughs> once a month. You got to sing your way through Strutty's world. The people want it. Strutty. Be careful what you ask for, Shogger, because I've heard you sing before too, and you have a decent set of pipes on you as well. No, you can no, no, play no, a mean. No. We should start a. There should be a GYB band. Is what there should be really. No. GYB charity karaoke night. I could definitely go for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's do our gem of the night, Strutty. You get the opportunity to point to. Shine a light on the moment that you like the best, the point that somebody made, the play that somebody yeah. made, whatever really resonated in your world and deserve the highest honor of the day. Well, maybe a close second behind Relentless Player of the Day, but what is your gem of the day, Strauss? I'm going to go with uh, when Brownie said, you know, I, I had a pizza and a beer. I arrived in Jasper. And you're like, well, I no. love having a pizza after I skied. He's like, I didn't ski today. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> That was pretty. I haven't skied yet. I have not skied yet. Uh, but you're wrong, Struds. You're wrong. The gem of the day was by a country mile. You claiming that it was going to be the best Struddies world ever and forgetting the concert that you were basing the entire thing. Forgetting the band. That was the gem of the month. Uh, I couldn't call my own number for that one. Yeah, no, it. you couldn't do it. I know you wanted to, but actually that would have been that would have been Struddy like to call your own number. No, no. For a mistake like that. Uh, okay, pal, you did a good job soldiering through tonight. I know you're playing hurt, so go crawl into bed. Uh, say yeah. hi to Shona for us, and uh, have a good one, buddy. Good night. Don't stop believing, guys. I love Trooper. Down, 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 down. <laughs> uh, Steve, good night, buddy. Thank you. 
Good night, boys. And thanks to all of you for joining us on the live stream. Lots of great action, great contributions on Twitter uh, or on YouTube, and lots of people joining us on Twitter again. So thank you for consuming this show. We're having a blast doing it. Next one will be post game on two Wednesday. Or no, actually, we're going to do one Tuesday night, uh, previewing the Washington game. So we got Tuesday, Wednesday pods coming up this week. Uh, downloads and subscriptions, we thank you for those. Go leave us a review on iTunes if you get a chance. We'd love to hear what you think or sub on YouTube if you have not. Talk soon, folks. Have a fantastic finish to your night. <laughs>